This is the lecture for the found object self-portrait project. So for this PowerPoint, we're going to look at various artists using found objects as examples. So you'll notice that all the artists that we're going to cover have a variety of different approaches and create a lot of different versions of sculpture from these found objects. So again, when I talk about sculpture or any art medium in general, you can make art out of just about anything. And in this case, the artists really take advantage of that. So the first artist we're going to look at is Mike Kelly. Uh, Mike Kelly works a lot in old toys, stuffed animals, in order to create found object sculptures. So when it comes to your project, you have to really think about you know, how the material specifically is communicating, what kind of aesthetic you're going for, what you want your viewer to get out of your work. Who is your audience is another big question to ask. So, you know, this was one of Mike Kelly's earlier pieces and he became really interested in the idea of working with these thrift store stuffed animals and reconfiguring them into comical and kind of quirky type sculptures. Uh, so as you can see, this piece has a lot of humor to it. And then the second piece of his that we're going to look at ends up becoming more of a large scale sculptural piece. A lot of it is informed by the color that's being used. That's how he selected a lot of these pieces here. Uh, the, also because of these stuffed animals or these old kind of pre-loved type things, if he was really interested in creating these pieces, so it made like a mass in a lot of ways. So, um, you know, you can see by the gallery and the floor, it's a very large scale type piece, you know, so it's kind of comforting, but then kind of unsettling at the same time. Other artists, you know, thinking about the idea of, you know, an ambush or an attack like Damien Ortega, uh, using all of these found objects in a way where they're kind of coming at the viewer directly, as you can see in the shot right here. Other artists taking found objects and reconfiguring them into new things, like Willie Cole is creating a mask on the image on the left and he's creating a shoe mandala as an image on the right. He often uses a lot of domestic found objects, such as the hair dryers. Uh, he's very famous for using shoes, and he'll often reconfigure them to create imagery that's referencing traditional African sculpture. Here's Willie Cole right here in one of his shoe chairs. And this is a Willie Cole piece that's all made out of irons. So again, you know, he's really interested in using those domestic objects and then reconfiguring them so they're either mandala-like or they look like traditional African sculpture. An artist that wanted to create more of an installation or an immersive approach using found object would be Chiharu Shioda. And she's creating these large-scale installations using boats, thread, and keys. Lonnie Holly, another artist using found object in a way to talk about relationships. So this piece is a little bit more of a narrative happening here. You know, uh, he's using the chairs in a way that are kind of representing the human figure, but then also using roots to physically connect the two together. So the two chairs are almost acting as surrogate bodies, one chair larger than the other. Perhaps this relationship could be uh, a parent and a child. There's a lot of different ways you could potentially interpret this, but Lonnie Holly uses several found objects in his body of work and throughout his extensive career. Lorna Simpson, she's interested in using found object from uh, objects that are typically known to be associated with women and identity. So here she's looking at um, hair of white women, black women, purses, different objects associated with women and she created a kind of diagram mapping these out on a wall you know so with these objects you know she's talking about a lot of placement of her identity and how she's fitting in with other women 
One of the most famous people for using found objects, and this should be very prominent if you take an art history, is Marcel Duchamp. Marcel Duchamp was one of the first artists to use found objects and present it in a gallery context. The first piece that he was known for exhibiting in a gallery was this urinal piece where he signed it, Armut, 1917. Hillebrand and Magsman, this is a mandala piece created from several found objects. So, you know, the objects themselves are, are chosen because of, you know, the identity of these artists wanting to create like a table-like landscape, but then also alter the objects by creating colors. So it's almost kind of like a warm, inviting piece. Uh, but as you investigate it, you kind of see a little bit more what's going on. All the objects have to do with specific food items, uh, domestic life, uh, being in a kitchen-like setting. So, you know, you could really think about like how these objects are creating a narrative. This piece is a little bit more of a quirky, fun piece by Kyle Bean. This is a chicken made out of several eggs. Uh, as you, most of you know, who have taught, who have worked with me in class before, I like puns. So I saw this piece and I quite enjoyed it. Betty Sarr, I thought she would be a really great example to show everyone because this piece is one where she's talking about the Aunt Jemima imagery and kind of deconstructing that and, you know, what essentially that means to her as an artist, you know. So she was taking the various forms of Aunt Jemima and then um, making a sort of altar for it. So this piece is called The Liberation of Aunt Jemima. Um, so, you know, you can see here it has many layers and... I, I thought this was a great piece to talk about like portrait and identity with found object. Merritt Oppenheim. So, you know, even with your found objects, you can consider covering it in another material if that is really important to the idea of your project. So in this case, this is a cup, saucer, and spoon that Merritt Oppenheim covered in hair. This particular artist, I have several slides of her work and she uses found objects in some really cool ways. So she'll make some installations like she's done on the left. These are all prescription pill bottles. And then on the right, you know, she's made a um, sound wave. That's the name of the piece. And um, it's a wave made out of vinyl records. So she tends to collect lots of different materials and then she reassembles them into either like singular sculptures or large scale installations. So in this case, these are the soles of shoes that she did an installation on the floor where it almost felt like a crowd of people. This is a piece uh, called Chance City. So these are all losing lottery tickets reconfigured into a city. These are all shirts deconstructed into the linear elements where, you know, it's just using the buttons and the seams to create kind of these ghosts of shirts. I believe the title of this piece is called Memorial, but these are all found object trophies. And then she kind of works this piece in two different layers where she has the mass of trophies that you see on the foreground here, right here in the front. And then she has video projection of them up close where it's just focusing on the people. So it's interesting because, you know, you have the piece existing at different heights, but then you also have them um, projected all at the same level just as people. And they kind of become this weird uh, mass of kind of chaos. You know, they almost kind of look like an angry mob from the background, but you know, then you see like, oh, there's a guy playing basketball and cheerleader. And you know, it's just kind of interesting as a society, what we think to memorialize. So. Um, you know, Jean Shin works a lot with those relationships in her work. Elenata Soy, he is an artist from Nigeria. And believe it or not, this piece is all made out of discarded cans that you'd find in the street. Just, you know, like regular soda cans or beer cans. And, you know, he chops them up in his studio and drills holes in them and makes these giant 
tapestries like this piece that you see here. Piero Manzoni. So this is a really famous found object type piece. It's a little, it's a, you know, a little bit gross to talk about, but it also is very interesting conceptually. So this is a can and he has defecated in the can and presented it as a piece of art. So with this piece, you know, it's found object, but then it's also talking about, you know, kind of the art world in general or kind of you know, twisting the idea of what is art on its head. So kind of like Mar Marcel Duchamp, you know, initially showing up into a gallery with a urinal signed R. Mutt and presenting that as an art piece, you know, that caused a lot of rifts in the art world. Because if you think at the time Marcel Duchamp was making art, you know, we're talking the 1920s, 1930s, the art scene was pretty conservative back then. So it was a lot of um, traditional painting, you know, abstract expressionism was really starting to, to come up. But then, you know, you have the sculptor coming in and um, doing something really radical by presenting a urinal in the gallery's art. So, you know, Piero Manzoni is also kind of going along that same vein where he's, you know, conceptually trying to shake things up. And another one that I hope a lot of you have seen and heard about this piece is Maurizio Catalan's uh, banana piece. So this piece was presented uh, not too long ago. It was the last, um, it was winter in Art Basel 2019. And what he did was he presented this piece in the gallery and the price tag for this was $100,000. And, you know, of course, it's essentially a piece that you would take and put in your own gallery. You wouldn't take the rotting banana. You would, you know, go to the store, buy a banana tape it up a certain way that Catalan would tell you how to do and then, you know, have it in your gallery. But, you know, each time he sold this piece, he'd make $100,000. And I believe he sold this to several collectors. And, you know, so obviously it caused a lot of shakeup in the art world because, you know, it's a banana duct tape to a wall and people are spending hundreds of thousands of dollars to exhibit this piece. So, you know, some of these conceptual pieces that are kind of a, more of a simple act speak volumes because, you know, they're shake, these artists are addressing the institution of the art world itself when they're doing work like this. So Pierre Manzoni, Marcel Duchamp, Maurizio Catalan, all kind of working in this vein. Okay, so Tony Craig, I thought this was an interesting use of found objects. So he has different metal rims that are kind of all stacked on top of each other to reference bullets. This is a four-person collaboration by Maureen Block, Alan Gibson, Mildred Johnson, and John Jonathan Price. And this is kind of an assemblage of different tools and how they're constructed in, in order to make a sculptural piece. Sarah Lucas, uh, her work's a little bit more quirky and comical where she'll use found objects in a way uh, where she'll create phalluses or, you know, she'll reference the body in some funny ways. So, you know, as you can see, um, she's fruit for a phallus over here and then um, melons for breasts and a bucket for uh, the pelvic area for a woman, and, but then all presented on a mattress. So, you know, Sarah Lucas uses found objects in a layered kind of comical way, addressing themes of sexuality. Supta Gupta, uh, his piece, these are a lot of times in his work, he often takes a lot of kitchen tools or pots and pans in order to create these massive sculptural installations or massive singular sculpture pieces. So I thought, you know, his idea of found objects and making this uh, kind of atom bomb type explosion was interesting. Very old school example, Salvador Dali and his lobster telephone, you know, so, um, you know, these found object pieces can be kind of quirky juxtapositions, kind of like how he's done here. Cornelia Parker, uh, these are all tubas, trombones, French horns. Um, in order to get these pieces like this, she ran over them with a seam roller and then created an installation where they're all suspended from the ceiling. This was a student um, I worked with in the past when I was at Arizona State University. 
she created a mousetrap bed. And I thought this was a fantastic example of a, a found object type piece. I mean, there was some fabrication involved, but you know, the bed, pillows, you know, essentially uh, the majority of it was found object. And that is the last slide I have for you. So be sure to read up the on the following articles on the assignment page. And I look forward to seeing what you come up with for your found object self-portraits.